Raj on the left with Hogak, Aluren on the right, uh, George on the right with Aluren. I just update the overlay here. I guess we didn't do a prediction poll last round, did we? Let's update the score. All right. We'll get a ponder here. So the uh, Aluren deck is not the Urion Aluren deck, just a 60-card deck. Yeah, this is a local event at an LGS. Stitcher Supplier, the turn one play. Cabal Therapy, Bridge from Below, and Underground Sea, I believe, are the cards that went to the graveyard. Unfortunately, the graveyard's all the way on the far side, but whatever. All right, so a bridge from below is available and a Cabal Therapy. Oh, maybe that wasn't Cabal Therapy because he, he would have just sacked the Stitcher Supplier, right? Birds of Paradise, Fetch, and another Ponder. The Hogak decks do have some combo elements with Hogak and Altar of Dementia, but I would say the Aluren deck is... Would, would you say the Aluren deck is a, is a more efficient combo deck than Hogak? Actually, no. Like, yeah, like which, which deck can win faster, Aluren or Hogak? I guess it's Hogak, right? Hogak's faster? How much variety in decks do you have? Um, we have pretty good variety, actually. We have a good amount of brews. I mean, the, the matches we've seen today on stream is a pretty like um pretty good look at what the what the meta at the store looks like. Learn is a combo deck that can play fair. Exactly. It is. Right, Hogak is probably faster, but I think the Aluren deck just has an explosive combo. Yeah, I, th I think so. The Aluren deck can just like can win from a lower floor. Yeah, I would say that. I, I that think that sound, sounds right. Less moving parts needed to win. All right, there's the sacking of Cabal Therapy, which. Should have been done last turn, I guess, but I guess, I don't know. So one zombie. Avenge Vine now in the yard. I saw Avenge Vine. Not sure what Cabal Therapy named, but it was a whiff. Wow, it named Living Wish? Okay. Oh, he cast it this turn? Oh, okay. My bad. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Man, I got caught up in things I'm saying and I forget what happened. Two bridges in the yard now for Raj. Just a few moments left for prediction poll here. C 
65% favored for Alluring, says chat. 25,000 channel points from Dark Zero. 9,000 from Chilith for Hogak. Should be interesting. Sacking Gravecrawler to Cabal Therapy. Making two zombies. A force of Will getting discarded. Ice Fang Coatl, a land and a Strix still in hand. Three total zombies now. And a pass. A little bit of a sloppy board there for, uh, for Hogak player. I think the coolest deck we saw on today's stream was that blue red prison deck. If you were watching earlier, um I think that was I think that was a pretty cool brew. All right. Birds of Paradise here. Making a mana, I guess. Cast Strix. Oh, no. Okay, he's getting a... Yeah. Yeah, lots of birds, right? All right, draws cards from Coatl and Strix and passes. Yeah, that deck was cool. I like that. That player is always playing some brews. If you play at Game Story uh, on Monday nights, you you know who that player was. They're always playing something weird. <laughs> All right, Stitcher Supplier. And here is Carrion Feeder. Are people at the store competitive about how much chat likes their decks? I I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, th I think I think some people at this point have, have uh, you know enjoyed watching their matches back later both on the live stream and on the YouTube channel. If you're watching later on YouTube, hit the like button. Um, and I think the fear of not playing, not playing their best on camera, maybe some people are sticking to the same decks over and over again rather than trying to brew. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. But I think people get a kick at the players at, at the shop are enjoying seeing chat react. I feel like I learn a lot from watching my matches over. Like I, I realize, like, like the round we just watched, I realize plays I could have made a little bit better or, you know, even just plays my opponent could have made. Just becomes so much more clearer when you're watching it back. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I don't really feel self-conscious about my play personally. I know, like, I know I'm not a master level player. I know I'm not going to win a pro tour anytime soon. I don't really 
like I don't practice every day. I don't jam leagues. I don't play in challenges over the weekend. Like my, like the, the hours I clock per week actually playing matches is quite low. And so I make mistakes here and there. So I don't beat myself up about it. But I know other people do because, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to put in the work to, to up their game and, you know, they, they want to impress. I get that. There are days too where, like, I'll I'll play in a, you know uh, in in the in the before times before pandemic, I'll play in a weekend um, you know one k or two k or something, and I'll be unbeatable. I'll I'll just easily breeze through and make the top eight. I'll go six and zero oh or whatever. And then there's some days where I'll I'll go o three drop, and I'm like, wow, I didn't even remember to draw my bobble. I played terrible. Like I I have like a pretty like I personally I'm not talking about anyone else i personally have a really wide range of how great or how poorly i'll play on any given day and i think it just for me a lot of it has to do with like my mood and my mindset like if if i'm like stressed out about work stuff i can't play i can't even remember to draw my card for turn i play badly when i'm not feeling like i'm focused Anyway, I just went off on a whole tangent about that, but um, I think people, I, th- I guess I think people beat themselves a little bit too, be- beat themselves up a little bit too much about making misplays on, on, on camera, but, but magic is hard. Like, we're, we're all learning. All of us are, mer- are learning. All right, so... W- we have a Hogak, we have three zombies, we have a Vengevine. Managing tilt is a huge part of the game at higher levels, agreed. If magic was easy enough to master, I wouldn't find it fun, says Sidorna. I agree with that. <laughs> Do it, yeah. I just think about it like I'm, I'm I'm always learning something new and like me upping my game in magic is not like the most important thing in my life. I I give it as much time as I feel like I can I can tolerate almost. And uh I I I just try to have fun more than anything. When is Worlds, Ledgeview? When is Worlds? I'm so out of the loop. I'm assuming it's going to be an arena event, right? A remote, remote arena event? And which, which pros have qualified for Worlds? I don't even know. I think a lot of the people that, w- without checking the the roster, I think a lot of people that qualified for Worlds before uh, for this year, I I never heard of, like they were they weren't uh, well known prior to this year. From what I remember. Maybe Ledger was being a. Sarcastic though. October eighth to tenth. Okay. I like watching Magic the Gathering Worlds. It's fun. Is it standard and historic? Is that is that what we're doing? Before damage to one life. 
Yeah. Rolls is full of people who made it big on Arena. Yeah. No interest for Arena MTG formats. Yeah. What if they What if they had vintage or legacy on Arena? Would you be interested then? Or do you just hate digital magic? Something happened with that. Shri oh, okay. There was some confusion about which creatures died there. I feel like Ra should have been attacking like for way way more power and ending this game, but I don't really know. All right, here's a Lurin. I do not play digital magic, but I play legacy, but I watch legacy on, on Moto. Okay. I very casually play digital magic and yeah. I treat it almost like people treat solitaire on their computer. I just, I just like play and I don't really care about results. I don't spend any money on it. I just like mindlessly click around for a while and take my mind off stuff and relax. And I don't play that frequently. I don't really bang my head up against the wall like jamming games on on uh, digital digital magic games trying to meet some kind of you know rank or anything like that. <clears throat> All right, Living Wish got uh, cast off the Charlotte's Agent Cascade here, and it's going to be Uro. Uh, uh, Andrew Geo has made you more money than I've ever spent on Arena. Nice. Yeah, there is something to that. I do not play MTGO because I don't want to buy two decks, and Arena is even worse. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing Arena like since the beta or whatever that before it was released officially. And I've spent like $25 tops so far. And I've played like a lot. But again, I'm, I'm not like trying to rank up all the way to Mythic or anything. Like, I, I just like play. And if I run out of coins, I just like wait for more coins. I don't know. I don't, I don't really go, go nuts with it. All right, here's Asa Rayrak, and they're explaining the combo. So I guess this game is over. And what does that get you? Just venture into the dungeon forever. Awkward thing. Like, if, if, you, if you have Asa Rayrak in your deck, in your legacy deck, do you have to own the dungeon card? Or can you just say, I go to this dungeon and like ask a judge to bring up the dungeon or something? How does that work? I honestly don't know. Yeah, it's doing the dungeon thing now. They have the dungeons built into Companion? Let's find out. Cards. Oh, there's a card database. Okay. Esser Ray Rack. I don't even know how to spell this. Wow, somehow I spelled it right. Esser Ray Rack. Oh, this is pretty cool, actually. They got Oracle text and everything. How do I find the dungeons though? All right, so. Let's see if I just search dungeon. Dungeon shade. 
sort of dungeon. No. I don't know how to find the dungeons on here. Do Aluren players need to bring skeleton tokens with them? Do they? What What's the skeleton token for? It's for a different dungeon? Let's see. Card name is Dungeon. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't really know how to use this app, but whatever. The long one, Mind Maze. Yeah, I don't know. All right, here's a Hogak, Hogak Crab, as they call it. Hedron Crab. I guess the other crab... Oh no, the the other crab the other crab can only hit your opponent, so that one doesn't work. Never mind. Another land drop. Grave crawler, altar. Grave crawler. Um, and a cabal therapy. Um, the volcanic for what? I, I I see a faithless looting, but I don't know what the blue is for beyond Hedron Crab. Okay. Veil, ponder, ponder, force, living wish. I don't know what was named there with uh, Cabal Therapy. There's one of the ponders. Days? No days. Volcanic Island... You know, the the blue crab and the red faith is looting is, I guess, what's up with that. Yeah, maybe Amalgam, yeah. Hogak is underestimated, yes. I mean, Hog Hogak is, uh, you know, it's a good legacy deck. Anybody playing Hogak right now in Legacy? Just watching right now? Have anything to report? Not from what I've seen. I haven't seen the blue-white looting in any Legacy decks yet. I think modern players are testing it quite a bit, though. All right, so land, land, Cabal Therapy, I think, with the cards in hand for Raj. Hogak player. There are some blue heavy versions that use days and careful study, but don't think this one is. Yeah, I don't think so, brother. Esper Reanimator in Modern, yeah. What do I pick up? Black Red Reanimator or Hogak? Well, I have all the cards for Reanimator, so I'd probably play that. But uh, I'd play Hogak too. What? I don't even know what cards I'm missing from Hogak, but. Are there any what what reserve list cards are in Hogak? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, do they play? Um, mm. Oh yeah. Be besides the duels, besides the duels. Yeah, it's just the duels, right? Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll try some Hogak then. Let me bring up a typical Hogak list on my screen here just so I can verify. Uh, 
Off the top of my head, I don't know what I'm missing. All right, I'm bringing up a typical list here. Oh, well, w one that just did well in a legacy challenge is four Lion's Eye Diamond, so that's a no. Let's see what other lists have. Yeah, Dark Zero, jam those emotes. Dark Zero has more emotes than all of you. Where the hell are all the Hogak decks? I'll check this later. Not all the lists run LEDs. Yeah, I know, I know. The one I happen to click on had them. Madness is kind of sweet. I agree. I don't have LEDs, which is why I said that. The good Hogak decks have LEDs? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't have the LEDs, so I'm not. I'm not playing LED decks. All right, there's Uro. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond will help with uh, flashbacking, facial saluting. Yeah, those ma those madness decks are quite good. We have a couple of madness decks up on our YouTube channel. Um, some really good matches, actually. Kitchen Imp, yeah. <laughs> Legacy staple, Kitchen Imp. All right, here comes uh, Hogak, I guess. Based on the... Uh, wait, what just happened there? Well, I think the player sitting next to him wants to see his hand. <coughs> so... Living Wish, Abrupt Decay, and Veil of Summer in hand for George. Here's, here's Hogak. I don't know if there's a Cabal Therapy in the yard. Very sloppy Gak player. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Missing Triggers. This is the last round. I think both players are two and one. If I'm not mistaken. And like we were talking about earlier, I think I think for, for some players, having the camera on them makes them misplay. Like, it, like the, the pressure of not playing, not playing um, poorly on camera makes them play poorly. I'm not saying that's what's happening now, but people have uh, spoken to me about that. I get that. Feeling a little self conscious. What I always thought would probably be and I I mean digital digital magic streamers do this all the time, so it's probably like not a big deal, but for some reason like what freaks me out in a way is having a hand cam seeing my hand. And seeing me sift through my hand and figure out what I want to do. And I, I know on digital, it's like the same thing. But for, there's just something about seeing my 
paper card hand, like, I think that would make me a little bit flustered, maybe. I mean, I, I don't know, but. Everybody second guessing my decisions. <laughs> What's up, Force of Phil? Yeah, Leon always had a lot of hand accessories. Yeah, yeah. I think in general, too, like, I personally am not camera shy. I'm used to being on camera. So, like, playing Magic on camera is just, like, not a big deal to me. But I can understand some people just feeling, because they're on camera, it doesn't even really have as much to do with with, with um, the playing Magic part. It's just stressful for them. <laughs> You're right, Force of Phil. All right, a new Eternal Dirtles podcast episode is dropping. We have Uro online here. It looks like another Hogak is getting cast. I won a tournament back in the mid-2000s before events were really filmed. The finals had a guy literally documenting every play on his laptop, and it was nerve-wracking watching him type every time I or opponent put a card into play. That sounds nerve-wracking. It does. Written coverage was great. Like, in 2019, was there still written coverage? Like, I really don't remember. Weren't some, like, Grand Prix or whatever they were called when we finished up 2019 strictly written coverage, no video? 2016-2017? Hmm. As you can probably tell, I, I never read the written coverage. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know. Oh, yes, there was? Okay. Duelist Magazine. Yeah, they need to bring back Duelist Magazine. I, I think I might start a GoFundMe for that. I'll make the magazine. I'll, I'll write all the articles and everything. If you're in favor of me bringing back Duelist Magazine, now is the time. If I made if I made a duelist magazine chat, would you buy a copy? <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 strange habits. All right, we have two people that would would buy a copy. Two people so far. If we get to one thousand subs. <laughs> I'll start planning a duelist magazine. I don't think I have time for it otherwise. We old <laughs> or old tech paper magazines? Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's something to getting stuff delivered to your mailbox. Like it it there is something that feels good about it that like an email or like a website can't can't do. But people just don't want to pay for that stuff, I feel. Like, that's just not a service that anybody wants. Am I wrong? Like, I feel like people don't buy that. Later, Luanil. Thanks for the support. Appreciate you. All right, Vengevine is here. 
Yeah, younger generations don't want that at all. Exactly. And if we're being for real, for real, like, Magic needs to recruit more Gen Z or whatever we want, we call them, you know, people under the age of 25 and over the age of 15. We need way, way more of those people to be playing Magic. Not that we don't have enough now, but we need to be appealing to them more than anybody. Yeah, they're all on Arena, which, which I would expect. But I'm just saying, like, if, if, if we're going to make a product, like, about Magic, we need to make it for them. Like a magazine. <laughs> All right, double fetch here, getting some lands. Yeah, a lot of things by have been hurt by COVID. I mean, like all different kinds of hobbies and businesses and everything. But I think Magic will rebound. Paper Magic will rebound nicely when and if this is all over. I think we'll... It'll just be a different world. It'll, you know, things will be different. Some formats will probably get revamped and everything will get looked at all over again. While that's true, Flying Camp Compass, it, you, you're also not considering that so many people just play Commander now. And... Commander can basically just be whatever whatever stuff you have if you're a teenager or a college student. And you really you don't really have to spend a lot of money on that to have fun. Playing privately with friends and family. Right, exactly, exactly. Like, a, a, a format like Modern is just not, like, interesting to someone who's 18 years old, probably, generally speaking. But Commander is just perfect. They'll just go into, you know, 25-cent boxes at LGSs or whatever, whatever, whatever they do. They'll, they'll just build some uh, crazy decks using whatever they can afford. And have a ha, probably have more fun than we have. Like they're they're having more fun than we are. <laughs> I'm making a joke, obviously, but th there's some truth to that. I think. <laughs> 